Hello, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world today. My name is Mark Curran, and I'm here with my friend Arai Beckman. And it's always a pleasure to speak with Arai and touch base, see what's going on in his world, because he's really up to some really interesting things. If there's one thing I love about Arai is his passion and energy are tremendous, and his innovation in what he's doing just in the world is phenomenal. And we're going to talk about a number of different things he's been up to today because we met just over a year ago or so uh, talking about his conscious uh, vitality program, the products he was putting out is hemp, hemp uh, nootropic, which is a fantastic product and really what he's developed in the meantime. So really welcome Arai. It's always a pleasure to see you. Well, thanks for having me, Mark. How are you today? I'm great, man. It's uh, Monday morning here in, you know, Maple Ridge. It's gorgeous. We had some rain after, you know, plus days of no rain. So it's kind of nice to get Mother Nature having a drink. And, um, you know, so I'm just kind of living life and enjoying what uh, what's going on right now. A lot, lot of change, a lot of exciting things uh, come down the pipe. So it's... Uh, like I say, it's exciting times. Awesome. Yeah, there's quite a bit going on in the world. And um, I know we've got a lot going on behind the scenes, which you're familiar with probably more than others. Um, you know, we are now officially um, one of, as far as we know, probably one of the world's first decentralized conscious streaming platforms mm -hmm. on the blockchain. Yeah, so you know, let's, before we even get into that, we're going to talk about what that means to be decentralized, to be on the blockchain, because I know a lot of people think blockchain is all cryptocurrency. Um, yeah. but before we even get into that, let's talk about why you're doing that. And, you know, in, in the beginning, it started, uh, I was introduced to you by our good friend, uh, Reverend Tutu, uh, in regards to your hemp CD nootropic, which is just a, a great product. I wish I had my, my recent bottle I right here, here, but I gave it away to a we friend. Got mine right here. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, I just took mine this Hera morning XR. as well. Hera XR hemp-based nootropic, which, you know, really energy, focus, clarity, great product. And what I loved about it is the fact that it's a, a hemp-based nootropic, which I think is, you know, the first thing um, that, that intrigued me about it uh, was the CBD base, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, it's been an amazing product. My wife and I take it regularly. We're really, we feel very blessed to have it. You know a lot about my background um, as an investor in the in the whole nootropic space in the pharmaceutical world. Um, I guess I could go briefly over sort of how I came about to learn about well, this. You, you, you are known as uh, Mr. Cannabis, right? I am. Yeah, I am. Yeah. It's uh, it's so my wife and I we had one of the very first ever CBD pharmaceutical companies. We were probably one of the first five or six that at least I knew of prominently publicly. Um, back in 2014, spring of 2014. And we were allowed to be the first ever, as far as I know, company to legally import CBD and, and hemp derived CBD into Latin America. Uh, we brought it into Brazil. We helped work with the government of Brazil to write their legislation, which led to them legalizing it for the whole country medically in January of 2015. So that's how I got that nickname, Mr. Cannabis, because although I wasn't a really big proponent of marijuana at that time or THC, I was just working with hemp derived things. We were mostly working with people um, that had epilepsy, mostly children, actually. Um, I had heard a lot of good things about THC and I was asked to come out and speak at some conferences in the United States. I was featured on a television show. And um, at one of these conferences I was in, someone said, so wait a minute, you, because when we wrote the legislation, the Brazilian government, for whatever reason, recognized that really hemp in the, the marijuana plant or cannabis sativa, as the whole plant's called, were one and the same. And so they said, well, if we're going to legalize the CBD thing, we may as well legalize THC at the same time. They did it both medically. Uh, which was pretty cool. So anyways, I got that nickname because I was at a conference and someone was like, well, wait a minute, you you legalized weed for 198 million people. And I was, and I responded, well, it was my wife and I, to be clear, she did a, a lot too. And we were just partners in it. And they're like, well, does that make you Mr. Cannabis then? And 
I thought about it and I didn't want to have obviously people handling, handing me ridiculously high dosed marijuana products for the rest of my life. And I said, well, yeah, maybe kind of, who knows, you know? <laughs> and uh, I told my wife about it later and she thought I could use that, that sort of moniker in specifically the cannabis industry as a platform perhaps to speak from. Um, so I ended up being on a, um, television show on Amazon Prime that feature, that received a ton of media. I started an Instagram channel and, and in the cannabis industry, the CBD cannabis industry, I actually have a completely separate business that serves plant medicine professionals um, over in that industry as well. So it's kind of another project I've got going on. I can't hear you right now. You're muted on my end, Mark. Yeah, I was I was muted over here just so I wasn't uh, clicking as I was sharing, um, you know, and, and I think that's fantastic. Just what you did in Brazil, both you and Kailea is amazing because you really impacted the lives of people. And this is, you know, one of the things that I think is really important is, you know, debunking the myths around cannabis and its its potential it's been a medicine for you know since the beginning of time really and used in so many different ways uh to see that kind of progress being made for me is is just really exciting and you know here in canada it's been uh, made legal ironically enough from the you know recreational side versus um you know the the, the medical perspective yet it, it's still, you know, step in the right direction. And, you know, taking, you know, the, the big move on nootropics and, and what's going on, how, you know, you've added that to this product. And if I'm not mistaken, didn't you once uh, mention something about a, some sort of a super soldier formula uh, that this was derived from, right? Well, that's, that's the interesting part behind this product. So, Here's the thing. So I, I think I'll lead into that with a little bit of context as to sort of the, the research, the work and the investment I've made into this space called nootropics since the legalizing Brazil of THC and CBD. So the deal is after I had a chance to do this pharmaceutical project, we made some money from it. Uh, not, an, you know, not an extreme amount, but we made some money and we realized that the pharmaceutical industry was one that in general didn't really resonate with my wife and I, just in general for us personally. Um, a lot of the products were synthesized to be patentable so that they could make a ton of money from them because it costs so much money to get through all these clinical trial processes to get a, a drug legally uh, responsibly available to be able to, to be prescribed by doctors to millions of people. So. I'm not one of these guys that is like the pharmaceutical industry is inherently evil and blah, blah, blah. That's just, there's a system that's been created and they're, they're trying their utmost to make sure that things are verified in my opinion, as much as possible. But what I experienced is with, whenever you synthesize something, perhaps it could be that there might very well be more negative side effects than if something was in its whole natural organic form. Now that might not be true either. We don't really have the data. It's not like we're, we're issuing prescriptions of, green tea to millions of people, you know, really. Um, so in all fairness, but either way for me, something within myself wanted to focus on more natural, whole plant form ingredients as they were in nature. Um, and some of that came from when we were going through the process with the government in Brazil and we were working to get CBD legalized, we were helping them in some of the original studies that they were doing um, on humans, which is pretty cool. And so they would use an, an isolated form of the CBD. They would use a cooked form of the CBD that would have some of the other cannabinoids. And then they would also use a whole plant form of the CBD, almost like if you put a hemp plant right through a juicer. And over time, the whole plant form actually was found to be the most effective, just the way nature intended it, right? Makes sense. Um, so after we had helped legalize the Brazilian government, I had that data in my mind of, hey, the more natural whole, perhaps that could help people more. Maybe that would lead to less negative side effects. Some of these prescription drugs in the farm industry are pretty gnarly in that they help a small segment, but they can hurt a ton of people too. And just, you know, thought that could be something maybe we could improve upon. So I started working with some pharmaceutical chemists. So chemists are the guys for drug companies that make drugs. Okay. And I went to them and I said, Hey, if you had, you know, if now that you've, you know, got your PhD and you've worked in big pharma and you've worked on these drugs, and these vaccines, these sorts of things, if you had, you know, best case scenario, you could start with a clean slate and you could develop a new form of, let's say 
supplement for humanity because I don't want to use any term that could otherwise get me in trouble here on this platform. Are we, we're currently live on your, on your Facebook. Is that right, Mark? That's correct. Right. And then we're going to, we're going to, okay. we're, we're going to talk about that too, is, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, you've developed, conscious vitality out to be what it is you know because there's certain things that we can say you know here on facebook as long as we're safe or kind of speaking the narrative but as soon as we contradict anything uh we know what happens right um but i want to talk to you more about that and share people share with people what you're doing there at conscious vitality for all the people who are looking for some more truth and alternative information of course Part of my my dog is getting pretty excited here at, at the house at, at the moment. That's okay. That's what I that's what I love about this kind of work that we do. You know, we're remote, we're mobile. You're in Costa Rica. I'm here in in British Columbia. You've got your dogs. You've got your family. I got my dog and my family. It's 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 cool. This is the the new way of the world, and I quite like it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So that being said, um, so I spoke to some of these chemists and I said, hey, what would that look like? Like if we could, if we could develop a new form, when I originally talked to them, I said, hey, if you were to develop something, ideally, this is just me not being a chemist, not from the world of medicine, not a degreed scientist, chemist, physician, nothing, just as a, a layman just a human being that was an entrepreneur that wanted to help people get healthier and live with more vitality. I said, what would something look like if you could actually address the root causes of what's going on? Because in a lot of the pharmaceutical side, we're addressing symptoms, which doesn't actually heal something underlyingly. And then ultimately problems can spiral out of control. People need more drugs and, and there's negative side effects with each of these. It's not a pretty picture. It's almost sort of like, from my observation, the pharmaceutical industry had degraded into a disease management system, not something that may very well actually heal. So I said, what would that look like? And I was really just open-minded looking to them for their advice, their guidance. And they turned me on to this whole emerging industry. This is back in early 2015. So this is really early on. And they were like nootropics. And I was like, well, what does that even mean? And the way they described it to me was, we're going to go ahead and try and make supplements that are as effective, let's say, as a pharmaceutical drug might be. However, are predominantly natural organic substances as nature intended, but ideally address the real underlying root causes. So if, if we're going after something to help with anxiety, it's no longer just going to trick your brain into not thinking it's experiencing anxiety any longer whilst all those underlying things are really actually happening like a drug does, but rather we're going to figure out what's actually causing the anxiety and try and address it. And I went, well, that's interesting. And I said, would there be any negative side effects? And they said, by our definition, nootropics have no negative side effects. And I was like, well, that sounds ideal. And I said, would that ever include some synthetic ingredients if ever they would be a benefit? They said, yeah, they, in their opinion, there are some benefits, obviously, that modern Western science has achieved in the synthesizing of some of these ingredients and compounds, and they'd throw them in there too. So I said, cool. So beginning 2015, I started investing some of my own capital. And throughout 2016 and 2017, I started uh, raising funds from others to continue this investment into this space called nootropics. I'd invested more than a million dollars by 2018 into developing my uh, some products that I'd hope would address things like anxiety, stress, help you have more mental clarity throughout the day, sleep, these sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So I'd become somewhat known in some smaller circles as an investor. I, I hold stock in a few nootropics companies and some of them are, are they do okay. Um, the products are pretty expensive. They require you taking a lot of capsules. And so anyways, at one point in 20, towards the fall of 2018, I was actually reached out to by a dude who hosts a very popular show on, um, on a very popular far out there network. And this guy claims that he was formerly a super soldier that worked in underground military bases and they worked with extraterrestrials. That's what he claims. And that sounds pretty far out there, I think, to the average person. It definitely did to me at the time. And he told me he has a nootropics formula because he knew I was an investor in the space already. That was from the secret Space Force program from the United States military. And it's comprised of the United States military investing through what appear to be private third-party companies and all this stuff. And for some reason at the time, I was pretty open-minded. And I said, okay, well, you know, that sounds like a bunch of BS, but... I'm open to 
learning more. What, what do you got for me? And he's like, well, he, he told me he'd like me to become an investor in the product. And I said, well, okay, well, first of all, I said, get me the formula. Let me know what your thought, you know, what does this look like? I said, I'll send it to one of my third-party labs because I've got a few chemists and a few labs scattered throughout uh, the United States and I'll have them formulate it. Let me take it myself personally. Um, by this point, I'd invested a substantial amount of money. We were working with some really credible scientists that, that I thought were very credible. And I tried products that did a lot of the things this guy claimed. And I thought I would be able to have a gauge on how maybe I could verify what he was saying or not from my own personal experience. So I had it made, tried it. This guy had a really crazy story behind the whole thing. He said it had been developed over 50 years and gave me this really long detailed story. Either he's a total pathological liar or he could maybe perhaps be telling me the truth. Um, he claimed that this product would help you feel calm under pressure, that you would have more mental clarity without feeling stimulated. Uh, that in and of itself, if it only did that, would be a big deal because th the biggest drawback of a lot of these nootropic products was that you'd either feel great or you'd feel like you were way too overly stimulated and you'd never want to take the formula again from other products. So that made me interested. That piqued my interest. He said you would also have, or go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I know what you're saying. I've talked to some people who are totally jacked up on some great stuff. They're getting lots done, but they're like, you can't, <laughs> they're all over the place, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, and that was my experience. I, I would try some products and that other people would swear by, and I would have so much anxiety taking them. I'm like, I'm never taking that thing ever again. So he claimed more mental energy without feeling stimulated, calmer under pressure and a better night's sleep. Now, just so you know, Mark, in the other companies I had raised more than a million dollars into, that would have represented three separate formulas of ours. You would have had to take about 21 pills to achieve all three of those things daily in these other companies that I was raising monies for and or that I was a principal in and I was helping to fund by raising monies. And uh, because I'm not a licensed broker, just be clear. Um, so we... I was interested. And then the craziest thing was he said, oh yeah, and it'll do all three of those things from only one pill and the effects will last you two days. Okay. Um, now for everyone who's watching this, that is not involved in the, in the nootropic space in a, in a big way, um, nothing lasts two days from one pill the previous day, just so you know. There's, there's nothing that where you can take one pill and then you, you, know, you have the effects all day long that day. You wake up the following day and they kick in and you feel them all again the second day. Nothing does that. As far as I know, nothing. So I thought, I'm like, okay, so this is a crazy story. I, I can't verify this at all. The only thing I could verify was that this guy had, in fact, worked on a military base in New Mexico for a period of time during which time he says he actually worked in this underground base. That's like a city and their technology is advanced. They've got flying saucers, all this crazy stuff. So I had a guy make the product for my wife and I, my wife and I both tried it and we couldn't believe our experience. Actually it did all the things that he expressed. And I remember him calling him that first day because I was like, dude, if I wake up the next morning and these effects kick in, I'm like, I'm going to bring this product to market hundred percent because nothing, nothing does that. And so sure enough, my wife and I woke up, you know, feeling like we normally do. As soon as I'd gotten up out of bed, boom, it was like I had drank a cup of coffee, but a calming cup of coffee. Um, I felt more mentally alert, didn't feel stimulated as things would come at me throughout the day. Whereas normally I'd feel stress or gut wrenching stress of something coming up because I run a few companies and I'm making investments in their stuff that kind of freaks me out from time to time. Um, immediately, it was like I would have this wave of calmness take me over. And, um, and, um, and then sure enough, when I went to sleep that first night, I had a really deep sleep and my wife and I have two little kids. Sleep is, is a thing of the past for us by and large, uh, whatever we can get. I don't know if you can tell I've aged quite a bit. I've got bags under my eyes. I'm probably a little bit more heavy set, not to take away from people like myself, you know, that are a little, that are doing their best to manage their weight. Uh, but you know, having kids like, you know, my, my healthy routines of being a young, fit, slim person who felt phenomenal about the shape of their body out the window, but I'm, I don't mind it because I love, I love these little munchkins, you know, they're our lives. And so anyways, so the sleep was deep and I remember waking up and, and I said to my wife, wow, I just had such a deep sleep. How about you? She's like, me too. And she's a mother. This is a woman who's been a nursing mother now for years. And I don't know how women do it. If there's any moms watching, and if you're not a mom and you still are in touch with your mom, thank your mom, love your mom, because moms are just heaven sent. It's amazing what they put in for us. 
And we both had a better sleep. And even though it was the normal, whatever it was, sporadic, interrupted, probably less than six hours sleep, we felt really well rested. Uh, and then sure enough, that second morning, get up out of bed, walk around and boom, like I was mentioning before, it kicked in and I couldn't believe it. So I called up the guy and I said, holy crap, this thing really works, man. Like, and I was very transparent to, to be forthright with him the whole time. Like, I don't know that I believe your story because that sounds insane. I've never heard anything like that. Who, you know. You know, I just can't believe it because I don't have enough data to verify it, but I'm open minded and this thing's working. And so because I had come from the hemp space, because I had such belief in CBD and hemp, and I was also known as Mr. Cannabis, I said, hey, is there any way we could add a month supply of organic CBD to the product? I said, is that possible? And um, he said, I don't know. Let me think about it. And so I actually had him. I paid him for the formula and then I had him collaborate and I helped to get in the middle uh, with one of my chemists that I use to make products. And we spent, I want to say, probably two months figuring out how you could add a month supply of CBD to this because I was a huge proponent of CBD. I thought that would make it a very unique product going to the market. And what I did is I knew the product, uh, the price points of most nootropics out there in the market. Um, a, a decent nootropics formula is going to cost you between 60 and 130 bucks a month. Some of them are upwards of 150, uh, which is not a small amount of money, but, but to feel the most productive and on point and sharp, people are willing to invest that into themselves, their careers, their businesses, whatever it is. Uh, and I knew that most CBD products for a month supply of CBD, this contains 750 milligrams of organic USA grown hemp derived CBD, zero THC. I knew that, that those also go for 70 to 90 bucks a month. So I figure if I combine them both for less than what one of them would cost individually, this would be a killer product that people would love that they'd want. I would want it. I'd pay for it. Um, and so we spent about two months. We figured it out. We got it all dialed in. Product has all the effects. Month supply CBD plus all that nootropics formula I just shared with you. Could it be truly the secret Space Force formula that they give to super secret Space Force soldiers? I have no idea. But what I can tell you is that was that guy's story and he's sticking to it. And what I can tell you is that as someone that I can absolutely share with you has invested more than a million dollars into nootropics, I have done probably more than $10 million in CBD sales through my own businesses now since I got in the industry. I've legalized a 200 million person nation of uh, hemp and THC products. I've never felt anything like it. I take it every other day, every time I can, as long as I've got supply. And, and I love it. That's awesome. I, I'm glad you caught yourself there on the every other day. That's, well, yeah. that's, I th well, I think it's an important thing because it's not, you don't have to take it every day, right? So I, I think that's a huge thing. And one thing I was going to say, I was going to say um, about, you know, the secret space for us, you know, whether it's true or not, anything you believe, if you believe, a belief is just a, a sense of certainty that something's true. Right. At this point, there's no reason to not believe it. I know who you're talking about uh, in, in that sense. So he's got some credibility. And, you know, this gets into some of the things that we were talking. We're going to talk about shortly is, you know, kind of why you have created a network on the other side of, uh, you know, your product line. And what I think is really cool is a year ago uh, when we first spoke and met, it was just conscious vitality and you have expanded your product line in so many different sorts of cool stuff, including this nanosoma, right? Which is, which is another one, which, you know, I want to talk to that guy. You told me so much about it. I, I look forward to possibly talking to the guy who created that, but maybe you can say a little bit of that just on the side, because you're really out there looking for, you know, truly unique products. And, um, working with that, you know, you, you work with, uh, the, uh, the Ayana water as well, right. Which I'm familiar with. I've had one of those machines for a couple of years. It's fantastic. Yeah. Well, the, the latter one that you just mentioned it was, so first of all, thank you for your compliments. We have expanded quite a bit for anyone that doesn't know about it. You can check us out. Consciousvitality.com start a free trial. Mark should have the link. I would imagine that you can click on somewhere yeah, posted. It's in the uh, the description at the top, and I'll pop it again in the uh, in the comments as well. Cool. Yeah, I'm a big I'm a big proponent in things that are that increase your vitality. I've got like this CBD vape pen here. It's kind of cool. I take TerraXR, the water. Basically, conscious vitality is just a passion project for my wife and I. Uh, when we found it, found out about this CBD nootropics formula that we then kind of 
you know, evolved in house. We brought it to market. It was right at the beginning and when the, the pandemic first started in March. And when the pandemic was coming out, I thought to myself, man, there's a lot of people I'd really like to interview on this topic of everything happening. You know, is it real? Is it not? What do we know about it? What don't we know about it? Are there products that are natural that could very well help with it? I don't know. So I went to some attorneys and I said, hey, if I wanted to interview a doctor, a scientist, someone from the natural world that thinks they might have something that could help with it, uh, with how things were shaping up the media at that point, I said, how do you do that legally without them getting sued and losing their license so that I could actually hear about it. Cause you know, who knows if it's even legal to do it on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, who knows? And so they came back to me and they said, simply just, uh, they, they wrote us a terms of service. They said, Hey, you know, there's no health advice being given here. It's all entertainment. It's only people's opinions, that kind of thing. And they said, charge it just a small nominal amount, like nine bucks a month. And then that way people have to have some sobriety when they're coming in. Um, it's not like they just stumbled in through, you know, free online social media. And if someone's talking about something that they think could help, then, Hey, it's their opinion. Don't take it as health advice. Consult your health professional. Always it's baked into the terms of service. They know what they're getting. So we started doing interviews slowly, but surely last year. And I brought in a few people. I wanted to learn about health and vitality. What is this thing going around the world? Is it, is it real? Is it not? Some people were like, it's totally real. Some people were like, it might not be. Some people might be, it's some people were like, it's super serious. Other people like, we're, we're like, well, if you, if you boost your immune system enough, maybe it's not as much, who knows, right? We, we don't know yeah. what we don't know, but we're all about keeping an open mind and seeking evidence, which we can verify. That's what we're about. Uh, and we want to respect everyone's opinions too. We're, we are an unbiased politically unbiased, virtually every stance network. What we believe that needs to happen is you need to have more open-minded conversations on every issue whether it's politics, whatever it is, and figure out what's meaningful for people on both sides so that we can then unify as humanity. No more of this division stuff, that we're not about that. We're all about unification at Conscious Vitality. So throughout the course of this last year, we've been interviewing a lot of people. We've learned about a, pro a lot of products. We learned about that product you mentioned, Nanosoma. Because this is on Facebook, I virtually can't tell you absolutely anything about what the product has in terms of science. But if you click Mark's link, um, from the top of the page that you first go to, if you click on shop, you'll find that product. At the very top of that product, there's, I want to say 64, there could be a few more than that now. It updates regularly. There's 64 third-party blind clinical studies that have been done on that product over the last 10 years. Data, third-party, from credible, reputable institutions, schools, colleges, oh. universities. And correct me if I'm wrong, it stems from the ancient Indian texts of the uh, the Vedas, right? Is, is that correct? Yeah, so the guy, the guy who formulated that product, pretty cool. So just so everyone knows, the last 10 years, he's been using it in places like India and these poorer places to combat, according to the literature that they have on that site, I'm not a physician, I'm not making any medical claims, always consult with your healthcare professional before taking any new product. This is only my opinion of what I've observed, but they've been using it supposedly for things like yellow fever, dengue, some pretty serious stuff. They have a third-party study for tuberculosis. They have a third-party study for MRSA, flesh-eating disease. They've got some crazy stuff. So obviously last year, he started seeing it, how it would affect the thing that's out, out and about in the world right now. Now, to be totally clear with everyone, when you're in the pharmaceutical world, just to have a third-party study in a lab, in vitro it's called, uh, in, a, in a petri dish, that's cool. But it's another thing to see it applied to humans on mass to see if it still does the same thing in humans. It does in vitro, in animals. It's called in vivo. Those are in vivo studies. Then it goes out in large, larger scale human third party clinical trials, et cetera, et cetera. Those stuff, those things take decades. But either way, it's just nutrition. It's food stuff. And the guy who developed the product was a, I think he's a PhD in chemistry. That's my understanding. When I interviewed him, he only it only said master's, but I've since learned he could very well be a doctor, PhD of chemistry. Mm -hmm. And he worked in the pharmaceutical industry for years. He would go to this temple. So the story goes that he told us for the full interview, click Mark's link below. You can watch the full interview with the doctor. That's why Conscious Vitality exists. It's full. It's uncensored. According to him, he's never done anything like that outside of Conscious Vitality. He goes through a whole pres presentation. I think it's two and a half hours long. Talks about everything, shows things that have happened over the, the few years. We can't even share that kind of stuff with you here on Facebook. That's why I'm being very careful with my wording. But story goes, he went to this temple in India where they would, they would pray using this, this concentrated form of sugarcane, which is 
quite common in India. It comes in these little pucks. You you know use it in tea, whatever. They would make these prayers, and they they got this practice. This temple believes from the god of Shiva, who came down to earth thousands of years ago and wrote in this thing called the Rig Veda, which it's my understanding is one of the oldest recorded written texts for humanity, um, definitely in India. And in that, it said, you know, good food, water, and sunshine will help treat illness in humanity. And they worship this, they pray with the sugar cane, they throw it in this pond. And this guy ended up taking a water sample from this pond where they've been doing this ceremony for thousands of years. It looks really, really green. And as if it would be full of mold and whatever that green stuff in ponds would be. And it turns out there was no bacteria and no things like bacteria and mildew uh, or molds growing. And he was actually quite surprised by that because they've been throwing the stuff in there and saying these prayers for thousands of years. So according to him, he went and actually found some of the priests at this temple, pulled out the original scripture from Rig Veda, had it translated by a number of Sanskrit scholars, because this was written in Sanskrit. There's apparently, it was quite a lengthy process for him because just the word water in Sanskrit has a number of interpreted translations. He found some research to do with Cuba with this stuff called polycosinol. It's a chemically in its molecule form, it's a long chain alcohol, whatever that means. I'm not a chemist. I don't really understand what all these things mean. I'm just Neither a do dude. I. Yeah. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to find out stuff about health. I'm, I am not a chemist. Don't even really know and understand what a chemical is or an alcohol is rather. But apparently it's an alcohol found in things like sugarcane, right? Which they were mm -hmm. worshiping at this temple and rice. So apparently there was some literature out of Cuba. They thought this polycosinol alcohol could be a value, a value, but they couldn't really get it to work is my understanding from what he shared with us in this interview. He, because he was a chemist working in big pharma, emulsified it, got it to a nano state and managed to stabilize this polycosinol. And that's what he started throwing into these third-party studies, which aren't cheap. They're sometimes five, 10, 15, 20 grand a piece to do. Uh, However, the results, which he got from those third-party studies, which you can find when you click Mark's link, click shop, find this product, Nanosoma, at the very top of the Nanosoma page, you'll see those reference studies. We referenced you right to the page. He started having some things which, in his opinion, were success, and he started working with people in a little bit more impoverished places. And so that's another product that, we, um, that we've since found. Wow. Yeah, I, I find it amazing. and I know I've certainly, quite frankly, I haven't been sick in years. You know, unless it's been self-induced, of course. <laughs> you know? And well, we'll leave it at that. Um, but what well, we I call like it getting that, well, we call it getting well at that point, though, no? Uh, well, it depends on what the self-induction is. <laughs> you know, there's 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 plant medicines, which you know we will we'll get into our you know our, our show, our program on conscious vitality, psychedelic world, um, and some things that we can't talk about openly on on Facebook and other media. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just one of those things. And, and this is one of the things that I, I appreciate about you guys as well, Arai, is just your flexibility and your foresightedness to really look towards the future. And um, that way, you know, there's so much we can't say on Facebook. And, and this is what's happened to me in the past, you know, year and a half or so it's all all of a sudden finding that safe zone in social media and everything else because you you whatever it is you say you're offending someone if you're not getting censored or blacklisted i know so many people who have been censored kicked off facebook's kicked off youtube they can't say what they're going to say and and it's dividing not only you know, work associates, but friends and families um, with all this crazy stuff that's happening in the world today. And, you know, like you say, whether it's true, whether it isn't, we don't always know. And it's important to be open to listen to what other people are saying. I don't understand how great doctors and scientists can be so opposed if they're going by science, because science should just be science. Right. I think uh, our friend uh, David Wolf talks, uh, refers to it as scientism, right? Scientism. Yeah. The religion of dogmacy of science. And as someone yeah. that spent quite a bit of time in the science based health field, there was something that you notice after you studied literature that's as credible as it gets. It's peer reviewed, it's third party, it's published in rep reputable journals. 
you could pretty much find a scientific study to support both sides of a conversation. Like with diet, as an example, I could show you studies that say, Hey, eating animal products and including meat, best thing ever for you. I could show you studies that say the same thing about being a vegetarian. So it's sort of weird. Like you can have studies that show everything. So it's a weird thing. Like that's where the individual I'm involved in. I was just interviewed by uh, a, a really cool dude named Aaron Abke on Friday afternoon. And he's actually backing up all of his content on conscious vitality because he's concerned of coming censorship. What's happening, people's YouTube channels are being deleted. And I think the reason people are concerned about it is because they're not really clear as to why. They want to have open-minded discussions about certain topics. And they can even be asking questions from a critical thinking standpoint, seeking evidence, and the video will get deleted, their channel will get a strike, and boom, they're gone. And people spend years building these channels and they're, they're, they're passionate about what they're wanting to discuss. So conscious vitality is a safe haven where ultimately, as far as I know, we're the world's first conscious streaming platform decentralized on the blockchain so that ultimately you can hear from the content creator you want, like Mark wanting to talk about whatever he wants. It's fully uncensored. It's not going anywhere. You guys can engage. We have a social media platform behind the scenes so you can make friends with your favorite content creator, be a part of groups that you know are going to be there to stay. So that being said, though, talking about scientism, you know, we could devolve on any one of these tangents. Uh, but yeah, we just try and keep an open mind. No one knows the truth. No one does. But why does the media have to be so polarizing and divisive about it? Why does that have to happen? You know, the age old expression, never discuss politics or religion, right? So that you just don't get people too triggered because some people can't handle talking about them. I'm more than happy to talk about the fact that I am a liberal in the voting sense in Canada. Anyone looking at this? I've had so many people accuse me of being a Republican. You're a Republican conservative. I'm like, well, actually, I'm Canadian. <laughs> F <laughs> FYI. Um, and I voted liberal the last time I voted. Actually, that's that's how I voted. But because that's the point is it shouldn't be labeled to the point where people can then grab onto something, feel that they're now divided from you and they're going to fight against you. Why do we have to be fighting so much? Why can't we just figure out the meaningful points on both sides of a discussion? whether it's left versus right, red versus blue, liberal versus Republican, whatever it is, and, and then figure out a way to then unify on those points. Because actually, if you get beyond, I think the media the last four years, the United States particularly using Trump was so polarized. They got people mm -hmm. so wound up. They got people so excited. They would show, you know, Trump, Trump said some pretty you know, ridiculous things that made it very easy for the media, you know, <laughs> to-, to to, you know, go, oh, look at that idiot. And, you know, and he said some stuff that sounded pretty dumb sometimes. But at the same time, he said stuff as well, like being from Canada, completely objective, you know, watching what was happening. He said some stuff too that made some sense as well. You can't, not everybody says stupid stuff 100% of the time, of course. And, but the thing is the media got people so riled up that then they were so divisive towards each other. It's in my opinion, don't, I don't care if you agree with me or not. It's counterproductive. Division in humanity is counterproductive. I don't care who you are. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I feel like, let's say in that particular conversation where the liberals and the Republicans, the liberals, the conservatives, Democrats, Republicans, where they were having these conversations, I'm actually more interested in finding out, hey, why do the liberals care so much about these environmental laws or, or elements that might appear to lean more towards socialism because they care about humanity and they want them to get funding or they want them to get help or they're concerned about racism like the Black Lives Matters. Okay, cool. I'm Canadian. I come from a socialist country. There is value to socialism. There's also detriments to socialism that Canadians talk about all the time, right? Which you guys don't know because you're not Canadian. You're not from there. Vice versa. What's going on here? What do the conservatives care about? Why is that important to them? Figure it out because humanity needs to have these kinds of open-minded conversations where more importantly, we unify and we're open-minded enough to at least try and explore the value that each side cares about the meaning behind what each of them care about to see if we can agree. And then if we can agree, if we can unify, then maybe we can work together towards solutions. What I observed happening in the media last year was only a, a division thing. It only got people more worked up. It had them feel like they were on opposite sides. Well, aren't they a part of the same nation? Shouldn't you really be figuring out how to come together and figure this shit out for the betterment of your whole country, um, especially a country that impacts the world as much as it does. So Really at Conscious Vitality, we're not, the, we're not the philosophers who figured out the age-old question of what is truth and how do you ultimately protect that? No, we're just simply trying to help people have open-minded discussions where they're polite to each other, discover the meaning, 
and unify. And we've brought together a platform, however, where we won't censor you for talking about stuff that you're passionate about, because we believe that you deserve to have your own evolution. We believe that you don't all need to think the same things. And we think that having healthy, open-minded discussions and discourse is what's helped humanity evolve. And there's many top topic examples I could give where even in my own life, I might've had one position early on and now I've since shifted and evolved on that by hearing from other people what their thoughts and experiences and research well, has been. And, and that's kind of cognitive dissonance at its, at its core, right? You know, at some point people hear things enough until it's, they realize it's actually true, you know? Um, and there's so much out there in the media right now that it's, it is confusing, but I think that people need to get the facts and people need to be able to share the facts and share the truth. And, you know, when all of these platforms are infringing on our basic fundamental rights, you know, freedom of speech, uh, whatever, whatever that may be, whether someone agrees or disagrees, I think becomes a, kind of a level of you know, conscious awakening is to be able to even agree to disagree. But when you see families polarized on their beliefs, I, I see mothers and kids, um, and I mean, you know, grown adult mothers and kids disagreeing on things that, you know, start with a V word and end with a D at the end, you know, um, and to see how these things, and as soon as you say it and oppose the mainstream narrative, you're getting shut down and you're this hater and you're yet there's a whole science that talks about, you know, what's really going on. And I, I just think that it's important. And this is why I really value what you guys are doing is to create that platform and being on the blockchain so that you're, you know, unhackable. And it, it's a place that we can share information and bring community together. And as a community builder myself, I think it's really important that people have forums to have these conversations, to connect with like-minded people and to learn, you know, and only based, you know, we, we have to have you know, some good information, some good evidence. And, and it's one of the things I saw someone talking the other day. It's how do you know what's really true? We're in entitled to our, our own facts or our own opinions. We're not entitled to our own facts, right? And then where do the facts come from? So it's like, unless you've got the smoking gun in your hand, how can you prove anything nowadays, right? Yeah. And well, I think this yeah, is what... Is what's happening just yeah. with people not believing and trusting what they're seeing out there, even if you gave them the smoking gun, right? Well, yeah. And so with what's happened this last year, here's how I will be, to the best of my ability, totally objective. Okay. So you've got one group of people that are watching stuff in the media and they're getting afraid about this thing that happened the last year. I, I don't even think we can say the term, which is just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. without potentially having this video ripped down. So that that's ridiculous. The fact is you should be able to just talk about stuff open-mindedly. Um, so a lot of people are freaking out and I understand why, because it could be terrifying. Hey, this thing could be spreading throughout the air. People could be dying. Let's figure out what it is. How do we treat it? Whatever. Fair enough. Other people want to really dive into the data, understand how serious or severe something is or isn't. That a fair point. Other people want to know, hey, is there anything natural and alternative that can treat this? until these things that you can't mention on this particular platform, just at least complete human safety trials. Yeah, that's a totally fair point for sure. Don't you think there, uh, having been an investor in the pharmaceutical industry, having been an entrepreneur in that industry, I know for a fact, it's totally understood and recognized that you can't give one drug to absolutely everyone without that drug having negative side effects for a certain percentage of the population, period. Right? Mm -hmm. So people should, have the human right, if we truly are living in a democratic society, here's where it gets interesting. If we've left democracy into socialism or communism or some sort of military dictatorship, then they don't have that right. So which one is it? Which society are we living in? If we're still living in a democratic society, then people should say, hey, I'm totally open to these things, but I would love to know if there's anything natural that might have zero to no negative side effects because everything comes with a negative side effects, when, a negative side effect potential when it's in the form of a drug. The reason why these things that you cannot mention that start with a V on this platform, which is ridiculous, should really be investigated. And the reason why they usually take years usually decades with long-term human clinical 
safety studies, right? Long-term, third-party, peer-reviewed, is because they can oftentimes have pretty gnarly negative side effects, which is fine. I, I love the advancement of human medicine and human Western science in that, as an example, I think a lot of people didn't get polio because of the polio vaccine. As an example, I just said vaccine, so maybe this video is going to get censored now on, on Facebook. I am and was a huge proponent of vaccines and got my wife and I extra vaccines before we went down to Brazil. But I knew how to look at the long-term safety studies. I looked up how many people had been, had received it over the years. I understood there was a small chance it was negative for a small percentage of the population, but I made a conscious decision as to whether or not I wanted to have it at that time because of that data that I had access to, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, my, my family and my wife's family, I'll give you a story as to why I think it's so important that people in a democratic society can at least ask questions push back and not have anything mandated on them, whether someone's for or against these things. So well, both free Kylie choice. and I- Free choice at its, at, at its foundation, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and so here's an example. Here's an example for people who are watching this. So many people, virtually everyone watching this knows about the Nazi regime, that regime that started in the 30s and went on until about mid 40s during you know World War too, right? So it was a pretty bad thing people know about, right? People know that that was a horrible thing that happened. It was a huge atrocity against humanity. Many, many aspects of population, obviously many people were murdered. And in particular, people know of the story of how the Jewish population was totally persecuted. Genocide was committed. Absolutely horrific. Well, Kailea, both myself and my wife have Jewish ethnicity. We have genetics. We say we're Jewish because we're not super Jewish religion. We actually meditate. We actually believe Christ was enlightened, which would make us not typically standard Jews. It actually, there's a different sect there. It's called Messianic Jews that believe he actually was the Messiah, but we predominantly were yogis. We meditate. We practice Kriya Yoga, which Yogananda taught uh, as a cool aside. I love to plug that one when I can. Yeah, it's a great favorite book. It's good. It's my favorite book of all time. Autobiography of Yogi, go read it yeah, if you haven't. Exactly. So, so that being said, we're both eth ethnically Jewish. So both sides of our family at some point, fortunately made it out of Europe, made it out of Nazi controlled Europe at varying stages of when the Nazis were coming to power. So as an example, when the Nazi party got into power, they weren't promising the German people that they were going to go out and murder Jewish people en masse. Right. That's not how they that's not how Hitler started off his speeches. Rather, it was I'm going to help your economy to recover after world, uh, the first world war where the Kaiser screwed everything up and I'm going to help us get out of debt and you're going to be a strong nation again. Slowly but surely over time, however, they did this really interesting thing where essentially they said, hey, this one portion of the population is dangerous to you, the rest of you, the masses, they're dangerous. So you know what, we're going to remove some of their human rights. It's not going to be that dramatic. It's just be, be these little things. One step at a time, the population was probably like, I don't know for sure because I wasn't there, but I would imagine just normal people were like, you know what, I'm not sure how I feel about that because removing, removing human rights from people doesn't feel too great, but that's a pretty small thing. It's not that big of a deal in the grand scope of things. Oh, okay, you know what, I would fight for it, but it's minuscule. We'll just let it slide. But then as they actually remove that, that, let's say those human rights from the Jewish population to keep everyone else safe, the line actually was then moved by the Nazi party slightly. Okay. The moral compass lines are already removed one right. It's now the lines over here. So they actually slowly but surely remove those human rights from that one, just a small portion of the population, just a few million people uh, when it came to all of Germany, all of Europe. And I actually did a report last year where I found that they had shifted the legislation in Nazi Germany 37 to 41 times a year. And they did that over the course of eight years. Now, what does that mean? It means they were able to tell the population that one group was dangerous to the rest. And as a result, because they were dangerous, they were going to remove more of their human rights. Okay. Now, a lot of people go, well, how could those German people be okay with the Nazis murdering these Jews en masse. They actually also persecuted, most people don't even know this, the Jehovah's Witness population and gypsies. And actually, if you combine Russia at the time in Germany, the gypsies actually were murdered the most, a horrifically high number. It was brutal. It was in the tens of millions of people. Jehovah's Witnesses were probably, I think, the 
the sec, uh, there was the Jewish were the second most persecuted, the Jehovah's Witnesses were next. Basically, the, the Nazi party went around and they were just putting people in concentration camps and murdering them en masse because they wanted to, they didn't agree with their religious beliefs, whatever it was. Or in the case of the Jewish population, probably just all out absolute bigoted, completely unjustifiable racism, right? So that being said, though, that German population probably wasn't cool with that whatsoever, obviously, but after eight years of conditioning, after eight years of allowing that moral compass line to the slide, eight years later, when they were like, you know what, we're going to move them into this area of the city, we're going to call them ghettos, we're going to allow this police force, this special police force to, you know, keep them in there, the Gestapo. That probably didn't feel very good to a lot of German citizens, but they'd already agreed to this thing and this thing and this thing over the last eight years. And their mindset had generally, for those that were still in Germany, been moved. It had been manipulated. Now, a lot of Jewish people and a lot of German people that were kind of picking up on this before World War II were getting the heck out of Dodge. A lot of people were like, wait a minute, this doesn't feel right. This feels like the removal of basic fundamental human rights. This probably isn't going to go in the right direction. But you got to ask yourself, and Kyle and I do this often, we're only physically alive right now because at some point, some of our ancestors got out of Dodge before it was too late. Her family went to Brazil. My family on my mother and my father's side went to, to the United States and Canada. And you know we're fortunate that they had the wherewithal to say, this isn't right. We're getting the heck out of here because a lot of the, the most compliant, if you think about it, the most compliant Jewish people, the people that were like, you know what, we'll just go along with it. You know what, we'll just go along with it. They were compliant to the point where they moved into the ghettos. They were then compliant to then get on the train and unfortunately probably line up against the wall. So we have to ask ourselves, whenever a fundamental decision is coming up in society, even though currently right now we'd like to believe and hope that we live in a democratic society, is this going to remove a fundamental human right of free choice for a member of our society, whether I agree with it or not, period. Because if it does, Every single time this has occurred previously in human history, it has not ended up going very well. Now, in this particular circumstance, we're talking about something that hopefully scientifically will help against this horrible thing that happened throughout the rest this whole year, right? Hopefully it'll help. Now, in all fairness, there haven't been long-term human studies. We don't, we don't really know. That's not, a, that's not a crazy polarizing point. We just don't know. The reality is we don't know. It's only a few months old. Okay, cool. So those who want to get it should absolutely get it. Those who say, hey, I might be open-minded to it, but I, I don't want to get hurt by it. Can I just wait to see the long-term studies complete? Isn't that okay? You know, is, is, there, is there fundamentally, is there something wrong with that? Um, we should also understand the science behind what these things actually do. Do they really prevent us from getting this thing? Do they really stop it, us from spreading this thing? Can we die from the thing, right? Can we die from the thing that we're getting to hopefully help prevent the thing? These are all really healthy questions. And these are the kinds of questions that a society should be open-minded enough to engage in if they want to maintain the democratic freedoms that come with democracy. Unfortunately, I don't make the rules. I didn't write history, but in Maoist China, Soviet Russia, military dictatorships, call it what you will, socialism, whatever, the, you know, the Stalins of the world, these things, as soon as they were able to get society to remove the basic fundamental human rights of one population to create to keep the other safe, they ended up typically, whether it's power or greed goes to people's heads, I don't know. But that line typically moved and moved and moved until it was really, really bad. And then that whole system needed to change. So I don't know if we're going to have it slide as much out of control here in North America and Europe and other parts of the world. It looks like in Paris, as an example, they're standing up and protesting in a huge way, not just people that are opposed to these things, people that are opposed to the removal of basic fundamental human rights, because you know, in Europe, you got to imagine, in Europe, there are a few hundred years of us, a uh, uh, few hundred years ahead of us here in North America. They've seen these things go wrong multiple times. We're really in North America, we've never personally seen it go that way and then get horrific and have to come back, right? So they've got a little bit more experience under their belts in that respect. But you know, it'll be interesting to see how things go. Well, what I find really interesting is, First off, there's just common sense, you know, for for as long as I've been alive, you know, we've been kind of always been talking about have a strong immune system, have all of this stuff going on and, you know, how good health, good food, good nutrition will keep you healthy, stop you from getting sick. Makes sense, right? Common sense. And um, 
and then the um the fact that we're you know that's all being censored and being kind of poo-pooed out there now you know naturopathic doctors holistic doctors who've done great things for people all over the place are getting shut down so to me the common sense is why would that be happening right so that's one the other side of the coin is that what I find interesting is when we talk about our fundamental human rights, even when it comes down to our constitutions in different countries, <clears throat> how there are such obvious and blatant um, violations of that. And what I find most interesting is on the, you know, I don't even know what we call the non mainstream media, but they're all over it. They're sharing all of this information through every different platform. It's kind of why we're having this conversation today about what can be said and what can't be said. Yet none of the mainstream media is ever picking it up. Yet when it's in their favor, they'll use it, you know? So I, I, I'm always seeing this contradiction in, in the way that the media is um, sharing information because you know, where you're saying conscious vitality is non-biased, which is what I love, we're just seeing in the mainstream media, so biased, it's very one-sided. And if we're going to look at the truth and the facts and the information, I think it's important to look at all sides, not just the left and the right, but the up and the down, the front and the back, and all the space in between, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Like last year when that I think they were referred to as America's frontline doctors. They were wearing white, you know, lab coats, doctor's coats. They came out in the White House. They did a press conference and they were essentially saying, hey, we're finding right now we're in the middle of a pandemic. We want to share with you guys what we think is working with our patients. And these are PhD physicians. They should have a platform to share what they think is working with their patients because they will ultimately want to help keep, keep, keep people alive and more people. That was kind of weird how they were censored. Why would anyone censor that? Right. That that's weird is why I think that's a really healthy question for people to ask themselves. Who would want to censor that? Now, in all fairness, it's not a conspiracy theory to point out that the pharmaceutical industry has two lobbyists per every senator in the United States government in, in politics. It's a big deal. You know, lobbyists sit down with these guys. They're like, hey, we want to bring these drugs up. Can you help us? That's how the American political systems work. It's pay to play. That's not a conspiracy theory. That absolutely happens. Ask anyone in DC, Google it, it's real. So do these guys have such a sway over the media? Because probably if we looked at who these guys go to dinner with or who funds whom, maybe there's pharmaceutical companies with the amount of money that they make, which is a lot every year, also have some influence with the media. That's not a conspiracy theory. That's probably quite a reasonable statement. But would they actually censor these, these people from saving people's lives? just so that they could eventually ultimately have the majority of the information go towards a vaccine, the majority of the spotlight go towards these things when they're released. That's where the line gets a little bit scary to me. It's, I don't mind, obviously, big media and big pharma having corporate aligned interests if they believe there's value behind these products, these drugs that they're releasing to market to help people. That's probably reasonable. We live in a capitalist, you know, in a capitalistic society, capitalist society. But, you know, preventing people from receiving information if it could save lives. I think that's ridiculous. And the other thing that I thought was just simply odd, being someone who's from, you know, from these industries, focuses on health a lot. I did think it was really weird that none of the mainstream media in at least North America was talking at all about anything you could do to at least naturally boost your immune system. That was pretty weird. Why weren't they talking about vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, these things that are proven in science over and over and over again to help boost one's immune system naturally. Why wouldn't they be talking about everything we could do at least until these things were rolled out for the time being, right? It's, it's definitely weird. So I understand why a lot of people talk about the fact that mainstream Maya media is mainstream Maya mainstream media is completely biased. And I understand why a lot of people are saying that I, I recognize it. And with the censorship that happened with the America's frontline doctors, and now you've got this disinformation dozen, and it looks like they don't have people on that talk about in the mainstream media, natural immune boosting. They only talk about people that are proponents of these pharmaceutical drugs. So you watching this interview can make up your own mind. Is there a financial bias there or is there not? Totally your decision. And what Mark's talking about with conscious vitality is that if there's a content creator that you love, that you want to hear from, that has recently lost their YouTube channel or their Facebook page or has been banned from Instagram, 
you can hear them on consciousvitality.com because they can talk about whatever is whatever it is that they would like with you. They can bring on whichever guests that they'd like to share them with you. And it's easy. So I think that I think that gives a pretty good cover of it in general, Mark. What do you think? I, I think so. And you know, it's I think it's just important that that people get the information, you know. Nine bucks a month is certainly not a lot of money uh, in the big picture when it comes down to getting, a, you know, some some more truth or at the very least some more information to base your decision on to believe what you believe is true for you. Because like I say, at some point you can show me all the information online all over the world about really freaking anything. And there's always going to be that element of, is it true? Is it true? Right. And, and we've seen in the media, like even CBS, I think it was getting busted last last year with um, stuff in New York City, fake news and, and everything that, you know, it's out there. And, you know, that's why I'm excited. You know, we've got our new programs it's been uh, on the go for for a few months now, uh, psychedelic world because of my work in psychedelics. Um, and we're bringing that to the forefront to the, the conscious vitality community, which is um, every second Wednesday, six o'clock, we talk to experts and we're going to be talking to real people about their experiences, of which I'd love to share you my experience from what I sat in yesterday. Oh, my God. But again, I can't really talk about it here. Right. Which is the interesting thing. And what was the other interesting thing was, have you ever heard of an event now for people who are unveed? Right. You know, it's kind of a new trend of things that are happening. Oh, unfeed. I was going to say, no, yeah. I don't even know what that term means. <laughs> well, you know, we, we talk about the V because we're not saying that word, but, you know, there's a whole concern for the unveed about the V. So, you know, again, separation, all the stuff that's happening, but it's, I, I think it's just an opportunity to have a safe space and, and what you've created on conscious vitality and what you keep continuing to create and develop is, is really excited and I'm excited to be part of it and I know we've been talking about something a little new so I can come on every week now as well uh, speak about some of the things I'm equally as passionate about which is the truth and I, I just look forward to what the future brings but I'm going to put a link in the uh, the comments here if people are interested in the psychedelic world it's down there in the um, in the comments here in the video but yeah we we encourage everybody to just really, you know, make your own decisions and, and do it based on what feels right for you, based on information that resonates with you, that makes sense. But please, I just encourage people to look at both sides, because if you're only looking at one side, you're, you're not getting, and I just mean that on everything and anything from food to health to choice, even to a movie you want to watch, right? <laughs> it's really that simple. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me, Mark. And just to recap, we talked about TerraXR, the, the uh, hemp derived, if you're in Canada or anywhere else, or CBD nootropic. Um, super awesome. Just to be clear, it's made in the USA. It has a 100% money back guarantee, which you can see right there. Lifetime money back guarantee. There's no harm in trying it. We have tremendous, tremendous positive experiences from this product. I take it every other day. It's awesome. And we talked about conscious vitality. Mark was saying there's a $9.99 a month membership fee. So originally there's a seven day free trial. You can check us out totally free. Look around, see everything you want to see. If you can afford that $9.99, $9.99 contribution per month, we really appreciate your contribution because your contribution ultimately helps keep the lights on. There's a big team over here that's working on all the shows that we've got, all the live Q&A interactive shows that we do. We're making films. We're doing post-production on stuff. We're making incredible trailers to help spread the word of people like Mark. If you can't afford it, however, though, don't worry about it. Just write into team at consciousvitality.com, put in sponsorship in the subject line, and we will happily sponsor your membership. The fact is we've given out hundreds of sponsored memberships thus far. We have more than, I believe that as of today, we have more than 2,000 members, which is really cool. But we want to have you a part of the community regardless. So if you can afford the contribution, thank you very much. Your contribution helps Mark and other contributors like Mark that really are brave souls that are trying to share their voice to help waken people. They help on a journey of conscious evolution, which is awesome. So thank you, Mark, for having me here, man. I really, really appreciate it. It's such a blessing to be here with you. I love the work you're up to on Psychedelic World. I know you've had some incredible guests on recently. I know you've had Dennis McKenna and 
there have been some incredible people that you've had on your show. It's been a real Trevor pleasure Miller, to learn yeah, more about this world. This week, uh, coming up on Wednesday, we have Daniel Brett, author of a new book called uh, Iboga, The Root of Healing, which is just a really powerful medicine that's coming into the world right now that's really making a big difference in opiate addiction, which is really a pandemic of you know, global catastrophe oh, yeah. right now. So um, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, we've got a great guest lined up for the 25th. So yeah, check it out. And we're, we'll just keep sharing uh, what's going on uh, with us here. It's psychedelic world, conscious vitality, and everything else that we're doing to, you know, really make a better everyday life for everybody. And let's uh, pay it forward. Well, thanks for having me, Mark. And thank you very much for all the great work that you're doing, brother. And thank you too, or I appreciate it. Say hi to Kalea for me and uh, we'll talk soon. Awesome. Talk soon. You bet. Bye.